This awareness video is being made in the aftermath of a ship's stern tube bearing damage incident which occurred in a very short span of time with no previous history of any defect or deficiency in the propeller shaft or lubrication system. One of the contributory factors for the stern tube bearing damage was a combination of incomplete propeller immersion and engine failure. On researching further, it was observed that there have been a number of reported incidents involving propeller shaft bearing damages with similar contributory factors. And the awareness of this high severity risk with required control measures has scope of improvement. As a basic function, the main engine tail shaft connects to the propeller passing through the stern tube at the after end. Pressed inside the stern tube is the bearing lined with white metal having excellent load handling and lubricating properties. The lubricating oil passes through the stern tube bearing with sufficient pressure to generate a hydrodynamic lubrication film. The bearing being at the end of the shaft is affected by the overhanging weight of the propeller. The weight of the propeller tends to pull the other end of the shaft down and in effect there is a tendency for edge loading of the stern tube bearing to occur. The edge loading of the stern tube bearing gets enhanced in times of incomplete propeller immersion that could induce excessive eccentric thrust on the propeller and consequently a downward bending moment on the shaft. The most important aspect is that this bending moment is proportional to the thrust force which is proportional to the square of the RPM. This is the most critical learning and hence I repeat the bending moment is proportional to the square of the speed. In effect, an increase in RPM will increase the shaft bending moment and stern tube failure can happen quickly because of the loss of hydrodynamic lubrication film causing shaft and bearing contact with rapid temperature rise and overheating. Finally, for controlling the hazard and reducing the risk, in specific circumstances such as light conditions, draft restrictions, entering dry dock or ballast exchange at sea, the vessel should implement mitigating measures by 1. Limiting the main engine's speed and 2. Monitoring the stern tube bearing temperature. Ideally, a vessel specific chart should be drawn up in consultation with class that provides safe speed against light ship draft.